folks in between its coverage of racist NBA owners and ranchers, the corporate media had just enough time to viscerally react to Secretary of State John Kerry dropping a big A-bomb. Secretary of State John Kerry is pushing back after drawing heavy criticism for comments he made about Israel during a closed-door meeting with world leaders on Friday. At a closed-door meeting in Washington Friday, Kerry, Kerry said if Middle East peace is not achieved, Israel could become an apartheid state. That remark triggered a storm of criticism. Certainly the, using the term apartheid is a loaded comment, and that's what had Republicans, as well as some Democrats, up in arms over Secretary of State John Kerry's remark. This is beyond something requiring an apology. I think this is a resigning-type statement. That's right. Anchors, pundits, and lawmakers alike have been outraged over John Kerry daring to compare Israel to apartheid in South Africa. While the media feigns anger over Kerry foreseeing potential apartheid in the future, let me break down the reality. Israel is already an apartheid state. In fact, instances of institutionalized segregation in the country abound. For starters, Israel has a permit system which restricts travel for ethnic Palestinians in the West Bank, limiting where they can live unless they obtain permits from the Israeli government. These checkpoints aren't all that dissimilar from South Africa's pass system, which restricted movement for blacks. In regard to the limited mobility of Palestinians, former U.S. President Jimmy Carter said in 2006 that, quote, when Israel occupies territory deep within the West Bank and connects the 200 or so settlements with each other with a road and then prohibits the Palestinians from using that road, or in many cases even crossing it, this perpetuates even worse instances of apartness or apartheid than we witnessed even in South Africa. Wow. But as the last half century shows, the gradual takeover of Palestinian land by Israeli colonies means that every day, Palestinians are left with less and less land to call their own. And less land means less rights. Following the 1948 designation of Israel as the Jewish state, the land was effectively cleansed of Palestinian inhabitants. You need only look at the demographics today, where nearly 70% of Gaza residents once lived where it's now considered southern Israel. Historian Juan Cole notes in a recent article how the segregation that exists within villages is not found on any map, citing that somewhere around 90,000 Arabs live in the 176 unrecognized villages inside Israel. The inhabitants of these villages are considered internal refugees, displaced after the 1948 war, having fled their homes with nowhere else to go. And being unrecognized by Israel means that tens of thousands of Arab residents have no access to public services like water, roads, education, health care, or even electricity. But hey, we have to be careful, not get carried away and start comparing Israel to South Africa, right? I mean, come on. It's not like Israel was forcibly injecting African immigrants with birth control, some sort of nuanced eugenics program. Oh, wait, yes, apparently as many as 130,000 Ethiopian women were forcibly sterilized, according to Haaretz, dropping the birth rate of Ethiopian Israelis by 20%. All right, all right, but at least Israel didn't uphold a law banning Palestinians from living with their spouses in Israel, right? Oh, wait, they did. Despite human rights organizations calling the ruling racist, Israel's Supreme Court has legally prevented thousands of individuals in the West Bank and Gaza from living with their spouses in Israel. All right, fine. But at the very least, there aren't any parts of Israel that would introduce racially segregated schools, right? Unfortunately, they're doing that too. Last summer, children in South Tel Aviv attended preschool classes segregated by race. So, knowing all of this, is it really any wonder why we're seeing growing support for the Israel Boycott Divestment Sanctions Movement, or BDS, where just like South Africa, an international movement is galvanizing to divest and boycott Israel for its apartheid system. So, given the emotional reaction to anyone simply criticizing the Israeli government, these unpopular truths are rarely discussed. But I think it's about time we call a spade a spade. Call it segregation, call it racism, call it what you will. But institutionalized discrimination and systematic oppression over any group based on race is the definition of apartheid.